Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to practice painting watercolor trees with snow on them. So I'm going to explain to you every tool and technique and process step by step of how you paint these. You're going to paint along with me, and at the end of it, we're going to be so good at painting snowy pine trees, all, all the different kinds. All of them. All the different kinds. On the mic, kind of, is my husband, John. I'm here. I'm fixing the green screen. Oh, you, are, I didn't screen. know if you had to unmic to do that. He's no, fixing no, no. the green screen. It was, I, you guys could see We're it. We're live. There, there. If you're sitting here for the live, welcome to the live. I um, love to pleat. So he's going to make sure that the green screen works, that the cameras are pointing at what I'm doing. And because I am busy in the painting process, he's going to sometimes ask your questions what that are you, you might have during the live stream on the show. Um, if I at all miss your question, because obviously there can be so many questions, be sure and put those in the comments, uh, especially on YouTube, put those in the comments after the show. Uh, I check those all the time and you might get your question answered. You could also write support at the art mm -hmm. and we might be able to get to it there. Hopefully a lot of questions coming in, but I try to get as many as I can. Are you guys ready to find out what we're using today for tree practice? For tree practice. All right. So I'm using Artistico watercolor paper. The important part for you at home is 140 pound cold press nine by 12. You could use hot press. I like cold press because I like its weird bumpy nature. I particularly like this brand of paper because it has a beautiful uh, press to it. It's got great sizing. It just performs really predictably. You, you'll see a lot of watercolors use this paper and like it. There are other good papers in the world. This is just what we're using today. And now you've learned a little bit about it. The other thing you're going to notice is that the sheets are not all loose. It's in a block. Blocks are really nice because they allow the paper to stretch as you work and as it dries. Otherwise, you've got to pre-stretch the paper with its own journey. If you're getting warping and wrinkling, um, I highly suggest you search stretching watercolor paper online and um, try some of those tips and tricks if you're not going to do a block. I've got to make one of those videos, but I don't currently have one. So Google it. Watercolor colors today are pretty simple, John. Google it. Google it. <laughs> That's <laughs> how to stretch watercolor paper. Um, and uh, channels that I recommend, I like uh, Steve from Mind of Watercolor is pretty decent. Also, uh, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, very decent. Uh, easy to use education resources. There are others, though. New ones coming on the platform all the time. Decent So chaps. that's just the confirmed ones that I know about. The millions I don't. I am not snubbing. I just, I have not met you yet. Um, <laughs> oh, Jane Blundell is pretty good. Um, 9 by 12 over here in watercolors. Burnt Umber, Payne's Gray. I'm using, I like Quinacridone Gold. Um, I think it's a really great color, and I might get some phthalo green and ultramarine blue. I won't, I won't probably be using most of these colors throughout this. The only other one I might get into is maybe the nickel ozo yellow. So nickel ozo yellow, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, quinacridone gold, Payne's gray, and maybe some burnt umber. Those colors are listed in the description, and we'll talk about it as we go. So you're like, for this tree, um, I, she only used that color. And we're just going to paint a lot of little trees, right? And we're going to talk about process and shape and everything. And my mom left me with a really great thought to begin this project with, which is that every tree is different even when they're all the same tree in the forest. So your tree doesn't have to look like my tree. And I thought that was a lovely thought to begin tree practice with. Tree philosophy. Now, uh, brushes wise, I'm using an Aqua Soft by Raphael. I've got them in different sizes. I've got a 10 here. I've got a 14 here. I'm sure I have other 14s just sitting around. Now that's an 18. I like the size 14, but I have many other sizes. <laughs> this is but one brush, but I have all the brushes that <laughs> I've got. I'm now just looking. So uh, I like these because they're imitation squirrel, but they perform very much like natural hair. So you haven't harmed any animal in the painting of your nature. It's okay to actually paint with Kalinsky Sable. No, I'm not at all making comment, but it's just really nice to see such a lovely product that is synthetic as an alternative. The robots did a good job of growing that synthetic fur. Let's get our brushes and kind of swish them around in our water, kind of prime them up, get them wet so that they're prepared to be wet. We don't want to shock them in the pool, right? The little pool where they're like, oh, I didn't know I was going to be wet. I'm also going to use uh, an 18 soft aqua if I have to do any wetting out okay. anywhere, big areas. The I big, have a question. Right? Mm. I'm happy to see the question. Oh, over there. I see that you gave me chats. 
Thank you. Mary Myers, hello, and Heather C., and Christy, and Lynn, and Mike Cook, and Jen, and Hope. Hi. And Michael Hart. Hi, guys. How are you doing? I'm going to sip some coffee. Do you think I need some? See, look, you can see there's a whole bunch of people. It's like peoples, peoples, peoples. Peoples, peoples, peoples. It's so good to see the peoples. All the peoples here. So I'll scroll back down here so you can see. That was not what I was going to ask you, though. Mm. You gave me one, two, three, four, five, five reference photos of various trees. Mm. I did, didn't I? And some of them are super hard. So let's start with somebody kind of easy. Let's begin with this tree. Mm. Shall we? Let me see if I can select that. You have that tree. That tree. You have that tree. Okay, that's a different tree, but I can start with oh, that tree. Okay. That one? Let's start there. They're, they're very small. So there's okay. part of, there we I, go. We'll that, start here. It doesn't really matter. Because we've got a lot of trees I'm move to over. paint. So even in snowy pines, they have down branches. They have up branches. They have such different personalities. The weight of the snow, the way it impacts everything can uh, really impact. And the real, only way to really get comfortable with this is to just make a lot of tree. So I hope that not only today, but just in general, you come come to the idea that we're going to make a lot of tree. A lot the of tree. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet out my uh, ultramarine blue just a little bit. Uh, it can get into my burnt umber to gray out, but I want it wetted out and thinned with water. And I'll make sure that I wipe my brush off on a paper towel because I don't want that much pigment to begin. Right? You don't want to start with too much pigment. And I'm going to come here on the right-hand side wait, 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 of my surface. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Um, you're starting, of course, where I... I got to fill the whole canvas, and also it's it. just the easiest to so start. Hold on. I'm going to zoom in for a Okay, minute. let's zoom so, in. So you just have to give me... Because now I know where you're going. You know where we're going. I'm going to zoom the, the overhead in for them a little bit. Just come in here. And come I'm in also and going to make sure I got my side view ready for them. Got to get the side view. So you just sort of piece the little trees together. Um, I'm okay. going to make sure that all of these little references and other practice trees are available. I could also suggest to you that you go to Pixabay and you do snowy trees or you go to the website Paint My Photo, um, PMP, and make an account. They have a bunch of people who donate photographs uh, that don't have a copyright restriction into them for you to use as references. So what you paint from them, you keep as your own uh, you can't use the photographer's photo on anything else. Like you can't take their photo, but you, your art that you take from their photo, you can use. So it's a good resource. I'm going to begin up here, leaving a little room for my tree to grow up. And I'm going to make, I want even lighter than this, just the lightest little kind of plop of snow. And it's such a weird, irregular little shape. Come and get a little of my... We did start on a harder tree, John. Did we? <laughs> yeah. We want to move trees? No, it's okay. We're here. I'm taking a mix of my phthalo green, my quin gold, and my Payne's gray to get this sort of deep forest effect. And you'll notice that I've pre-wet this, and now I'm painting some of this little snow coming out on the edge, right? And where it goes into there, it softens, but on this outer edge, it stays uh, particularly hard. Let me, where do we put my paper towels? They went away. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm also going to keep a paper towel, a small one kind of bundled up near me so that if I want to come back and bunch it up and kind of lift out any color, I can do that. Now I might come with a little kind of quin gold, not, not too dark. And I'm going to come from the top. And let's give this a little sort of, I have been exposed to the weather branch. I feel like if you do about 20 little practice trees, you will find your overall tree game will level up. I'm taking a stronger pop of quin gold on the toe of my brush and making little ridges out from that See, strange little tree. This is something that all gamers have known for a long time. You got to grind to get the levels. Yes. You got to grind to get the levels. That is exactly true here. I'm going to put another little branch up coming up. It's kind of lighter. Same mix. Come back with a little quin. I come to the outer edge of it. You can see I'm just tapping it and making it. Dotty. 
a little bit dotty, and I might bring this one up taller so they're asymmetrical, and I can come get a little gray here. It also just became Tip British. some gray. Look at that. Well, that just gave it a little weird antenna bit. Who doesn't like it? <laughs> Let's bring a little tree kind of coming out here. You're actually, okay, I see what, you're on the very tippy top of the tree, working the whole thing out on the way down. Yeah, I'm working top to bottom today. Oh, wow, man. That's like, I wasn't sure where you were beginning with that little flop of tree. I was like, is that the bottom of the tree? The top the of the tree? The little twin gold. It's the top of the tree. It's Throw the it down. Antenna. This tree has antenna. Now I'm going to bring out here some pine leaf kind of shape that's coming out from under this fabulous little plop of snow. We're going to just think a bit about how this tree could grow and be. The snow tends to sit on top of these branches. This is tree clinic today. You showed up today. You were like, I'm going to work on my tree skills. I got to get my inner int on. There we go. Oh, that reminds me. Take a slightly darker bit of the green and brown kind of coming down. Hmm. Would tree beard? met with all the other ends mm -hmm. there were definitely ends of different type there yeah was, uh, yeah i i saw the different for sure they were represented there is there is there some concern about there wasn't diversity in the ant community well earlier on i was wondering like what an evergreen ant would look like but they showed it but I, they did and i was like i just i if you're you know, not aware and, and you might not be and it's okay if you're not this is from lord of the rings I don't know how you wouldn't know that. <laughs> but people don't, and we don't all watch the same things, and we're all different in book. our show. But not everyone. I'm going to say that whatever is moving my curtain is shortcake. Twix. Really? Sh Twix moved it that much? Uh-huh. She's like, I'm going to get here. I'm just going to say it's a book that was also a cartoon well, and a comic book, and then a couple movies. So my snow is kind of a bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt umber. And I want it in a very kind of light wash so that I can paint it out wet and then come back and do some little blending in there. It's important to make these shapes irregular. And, and be, to be just generally surprising. Because they are. You want them to look like the wonderful little things that they are in the woods. Tree painting. It's a necessary skill. Now I'm working so that this is a bit wet. So when I come back with other colors, they will bloom through the, through the snow. Snow blooming. Right. And you want to work all the chunks of snow in one shot because they have to have quite a bit of pre-painted to them. I'm going to get a little of my green and gold and gray. What? And come along the bottom here. Looks like you were misusing this feature by going too fast. You've been temporarily blocked from using it. If you think this doesn't go against our community standards, let us know. What are you talking about? <sighs> Thank you, Facebook. How are we going too fast with I the stream? I don't know. Facebook is so weird. Did it just block the stream? I don't know what it did because I can't even go to the page anymore. I click over to the maintenance page and it was like, you were temporary. Next time, blocked. screenshot that and I have to report that again to All their... Right, I'll take a screenshot right now. Yeah, and then I'll complain. Uh, so hopefully everybody at Facebook is still with us. Screen. Painting... The nice thing about the green coming out from underneath is that it kind of represents the little branches that the snow is resting on. Isn't that kind of fun to paint them like this? Yes. A little bit different than that fan brush painting. Just building it up. Now, I'll wait a bit for uh, things where, like, the um, trunk because i'll want the trunk to be on a slightly drier paper that way it doesn't bloom away into the snow and i might come across the bottom of some of this with some maybe ultramarine blue if 
fun colors. As long as the snow is still wet, it's very doable. And if I need to pull up any color, I can come back with my paper towel and lift where it's still a bit uh, wet. So you can put on and subtract color. Now I know that I've got a little bunch of snow that I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring a little bunch of snow down here. Over here, I'm going to weave it in. It's a bit like doing puzzles. And then at the base, when I'm pretty good and done, I'll come back and kind of blend this into a little snow bank. And again, man, you just kicked us off with a hard tree. But the next one we're going to do is going to be super easy. <laughs> so come back to this one. If you're doing this with me live, come back to this after we do all the trees. If you found this one challenging and see if you don't find it easier. Sorry. But my true advice, I, I, I didn't get good instructions. It's on me. My I true do. advice to you is, is that uh, doing a grip of trees in painting this method is what it's going to take to improve your experience of trees mm -hmm. when you're painting, generally. Okay, cool. I got a screenshot. Okay, thank you, babe. Gonna make sure that I've got a nice little bank coming out here. I'll get my little dark under snow color. The under snow. <laughs> but that's what it is, isn't it? Green, quinacridone gold. Wow. It's Haines really gray. crazy because it shows that the event is going on. I see you painting. Oh, good. As long as everyone can see me painting. I mean, and other than that, it's just like, hey, your dashboard broke. Or, yeah, like I'll just tell them their dashboard broke. Ever since they've been um, trying to update everything, <laughs> there's been a lot of... Uh, I'm used to it by now. I've been online long enough that I'm familiar that anytime a platform updates any of its security features, everything glitches out. They're going meta. Yes. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a bunch of glitches. I was like, oh, no. Not that there's anything wrong with the meta system itself, but in my experience, these types of things will be, for the creators, very glitch-centric. <laughs> well, we have to find all the bugs they need to fix. We apparently do. We are the canary in the coal mine. Uh, yeah. So I just tap up. I love doing subtractive. Uh, when we do the Santa tomorrow, the pink Santa is tomorrow, we'll be using this method to create that crushed velvet effect. <laughs> Painting now, trees Amy in an to know, afternoon. You're, you're doing more than just this hard tree that I select. So many trees. By the we're going to paint a varietal of trees. The thumbnails, actually, I try to make my thumbnails the truth. You know how sometimes people on YouTube and on Facebook, truth the thumbnail thumbnails. is not the truth, true. It's kind of the true, which is the true adjacent. I try to make my thumbnails the truth because I find in tutorials, clickbait is not appreciated. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> I, I think I always think it's funny because they're like they start out like they're gonna teach you the whole thing, and then somewhere around three quarters to almost at the very end, they're like, "Okay, we're gonna jump cut to me finishing this. You guys just keep doing some more stuff. Just, I'll be right back. I'm gonna take a phone call." In real reality, you're not joking. Okay, so we're gonna continue to kind of do the ultramarine mix, which, if you remember, is the burnt umber. And the ultramarine blue. This is also true in acrylic. If you paint with me in acrylic, it's a great kind of acrylic. I'm going to definitely kind of lighten it up up here. Did you miss me? I did so much. <laughs> I didn't think you wouldn't be able to. I almost couldn't. I almost couldn't function. It was really hard. I was super upset. I'm not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. I don't even know what we were talking about before that. Uh, painting all the trees and that the 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 um, cake better not be a lie. There's no Gladys computer up here. Mm. No Black Mesa. I feel like I was heckling you about something else that was more. You're important. always heckling me. I I can't. If I kept track of all your heckling, I don't know what I would do. And that's okay. The trees don't mind one way or the other. The trees don't mind. The trees are very happy. So we're allowing this to dry. We'll come back and fill in with the trunks and everything in watercolor. 
Um, how watercolor is so different than acrylic is that you are playing soft edges, that's all this bloomy bit, versus hard edges, that's all this crispy bit. And playing those against each other is what gives uh, watercolor its very uh, unique and special look and feel. Oh. It's also what makes it initially challenging to the beginner. I actually think watercolor is a great beginner's medium um, because you don't have that many techniques to learn to be able to be somewhat successful in it, right? Learning curve is a little bit small. And yet, much like all other mediums, the the potential is deep, deep, deep. I'm still trying to figure out the brush. But you did a video series, which has been pretty good about helping with that. Oh, well, for acrylic. But still, We did the just, beginner acrylic painting course. That still gives a really good understanding of what to expect from the brushes, though. Yeah, it does. A lot of that course actually would apply to any medium of painting. If you were really new to art and you just needed some core fundamental understandings of what is going on here, much of that course would. Yeah, it seems would like be super helpful. Just getting the jargon down sometimes is just the most useful. I'm gonna come in here and get a little bit of our, you know, edge of the tree. Get some more green. I've got friends that are going through the course right now. I know that's kind of. You should tell them about your friend. Are you allowed to tell them about your friend that's going through the course? I don't know why not. I, I just I I they're just private like, business, so I didn't know. I, yeah, I don't think. I mean, like he's. Kind of, I mean, like, it's only unique because he's a Sikh and kind of sort of, he's like, I have a friend of mine who's a deep, uh, active in the Sikh community, and uh, he and I chat about lots of deep philosophical stuff all the time, and uh, just we're sort of good friends, and he was like, I really, you know, he's always loved the art Sherpa, and he was like, I don't even know where to start. And I was like, man, have we just done the thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> and so he's been going through the course, watching the videos, and just, he thinks mm. it's so We're going to move up towards the top. we got to fill in some of these trunks and things now that st as stuff is drying. This is getting really pretty. It is really pretty. Oh, that's too much burnt umber. Sometimes it'll happen when you when you have the squeezed out. When you got the squeezed out. I have a... Uh, my friends are all from an eclectic world of interesting stuff. They really are. Your friends are the most interesting people. But, uh, yeah, no, he's he's doing the paintings. Uh, actually, right now, he just I think he just finished the last of the, the intro lessons and is like, now where do I get stuff? And I was like, Let's see what we can find. Hold on, let me get a list. <laughs> so, we're uh, getting a little ultramarine and blue, and then coming back up, and I'll give my trunk a little personality. Are you going to have a traceable for tomorrow, Santa? Mm hmm Let me ask you this. Mm. Are you ever planning on denying people traceables? No. Okay, so. Even on stuff I don't think needs a traceable, if you guys ask for it, I'm going to give it to you because I, I don't want you not to paint because there's some feeling that you might have that something is not attainable because it's missing a traceable. Thala green, quinacridone gold, Payne's gray, and a little burnt umber. So I've kind of got the uh, zoom camera flipped to a rotating place. That's why I see the black bars on the side. But I imagine you guys are all right with that because we get a better vertical zoomy zoomy. Oh, look, someone's calling you. Aurora. Hi, Aurora. Hi, We're Aurora. Busy. We're kind of doing a show. Luna's in class. Yeah, she'll call you afterwards. No, I'm talking. She's in class. I don't think she's watching the show. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever a little bit of dark green in there? The block watercolor paints? I don't know what those are. Yeah, I do. Um, I love them. Oh, They're really yeah. fantastic for travel. Uh, really, there's nothing wrong oh, those things, about yeah. pans or because pans is really what you mean. The little pans, yeah, the dried versus you can buy the them, yeah. tubes versus sheets versus powder. Powder. They're all kind of totally good and acceptable. What it is is with um. <laughs> 
the cubes you kind of have to put into a pan. Yeah, to, they're to good for travel. They don't spill out. They don't make as big of a mess. You could, they're more uh, friendly towards the beginner who's going someplace, going to yeah. take a trip, get on a plane. Um, they store really easily, and they don't crush or dry out in a way that you can have trouble getting to them. So there's a lot to say about them that is um, super terrific. And I have pans. My favorite set of pans is the core watercolors. Like the ones that I regularly run. The ones you're always dealing. I borrow and then, them. And then I like the uh, Sennelier. I like, um, obviously, Schmicky. Everybody likes Schmicky. I don't, even, I don't even have any Schmicky, and I know I like it. It's out of my price range. <laughs> out of my price range <laughs> she's like i'm really gonna talk to luna there's just dish on the playground <laughs> that's okay we can i can i can let her know <laughs> that she has to chat after school so what i'm doing here is i'm adding kind of the sense that there's little branches that are maybe kind of peeking out from the snow isn't that fun it is fun it's just fun so we're learning a lot aren't we learning a lot about what's happening now I'm going to come under here and gosh so carefully and with an even cleaner brush I'm going to wipe down a little bit of water come along here so this tree is like really to the snowbank I'm going to get a little of my snow color which is the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. And then we need really some shadows and everything kind of coming underneath. So I'm going to grab some quinacridone gold. Get a little green. Quinacridone gold, a little gray, get something pretty dark. Mm, I'm not sure what I'm appropriating. Mm. Heather says, John, you're appropriating them, not stealing. I'm like, mm. Well, I tend to fall on <laughs> the Han Solo end of things, so I'm really kind of flexible on how you want to define that stuff anyway. <laughs> You know, one person's smuggler is another person's courier. <laughs> Just... So, you know, these are flexible terms. So now we've created a little bit of nice depth under there. And because these things are, you know, blooming into it, right? It's just, it's perfect for watercolor. It just... Let's the little tree just be, and then this tree only gets better and better as it as it as it kind of. Oh, uh, the core watercolors. Yeah, this, this, I'm definitely in the in the um, you know, if they're there, <laughs> being unguarded and watched, I'll you know. <laughs> I like that. So let's look at that tree for a second, it's and we do a lovely little tree. It's a very tree. Um, pick us another tree, John, and we'll do it. Okay. Practicing trees because every tree, it's all the same technique, no. but trees just have unique shapes and everything. And the only way to really wrap your head around them is just to do. Can, can, I'm going to just, uh, can I add a little weird anecdote that you can totally correct for me if I'm like wrong? Okay. I don't know. Okay. You feel like you need to? Maybe. I can be, I can be not. Which one do you want? This one? Oh, let's do that. No, that's a hard one. Pick a different one. How about the skinny tree? Hard. Well, no, that one's actually pretty easy. Let's do that one. That was pretty. One? Yeah, let's start that. That's a okay. traditional kind of little pine that we could All do. Right. So we'll go. Uh, well, we'll do that. I'll, we'll go next to this tree. So there were a lot of folks that were lamenting that they didn't have a good set of watercolor paints, and I actually started by using those um, Crayola ones. <laughs> you did. And they it's weren't true. bad. It's true. You did. I could make a tree and paint a dude with it. Mm. So I was so just saying, sorry. like, if you don't have access to decor, don't be afraid to raid the kids' watercolor stuff just to get started and playing because it works pretty good, especially the um, uh, Crayola brand stuff. So 
That was just what I was going to say. You so I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and, oh gosh, a little of my paint's, gr paint's uh, gray and a little of my burnt umber to create my next tree color. Are we still using the original core mini set? I yeah. do still have it. Yeah. I'm not using it right now. <laughs> but I... We got I, a couple of those. I, the use. original still has not been used up from the no. first time you ever saw it on the show. Yeah. No, it's still going. So when people are like, it's so expensive. I'm like, yeah, but not if you like take it over six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> as long as you don't lose it, that's a could be a and decade investment. And you can replace investment. individuals. So if you just go through the blue really fast, you can replace it for its amount of money. And so you're not replacing colors every time. It's not like makeup where you got to go get a whole new palette. And I think sometimes when people look at it, they think of it like makeup, mm -hmm. and it's not. It's super interchangeable. Let's get a wash of that. And we'll just start over here a little bit, and again from the top. And we're going to just tap up and down. Whoops, hold on. It's under the tree, so i got to hold on. This one. And then we're going to bring a little branch out, tapping up and down on the toe. That's not good. Tap up and down on the toe. A little bit of an irregular shape. Oh, it's another little irregular shape kind of coming out. You paint a bunch of these, you'll be like, you know, I think that there's a pattern. Yeah. I'll lift up a little color if I want to. Wiggle the brush around. Oh, that just says branch like nothing else, doesn't it? I'm a branch. Are you a branch? I want to come over and get a little green and tap it in there. I can just to make some variance to the branch. Maybe it has some personality. We don't know. Let's find out. I can rinse out my brush also and come back and suck up a little paint. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So there's so much option how you can do and what you can do and you've got to remember that it's going to lighten as it dries so it's important to keep that kind of in your forward mindset I tend to want to bring a darker color underneath the branch, right? And what that's going to do is that's going to help shade it, even in this wonderful watercolory little moment. A little bit shaded. Uh, whenever anything has snow on it, it's going to be lighter, right? I'll think about a little bit of a trunk that could be showing. Mm -hmm. Too dark. And you'll know right away, you'll be like, that's just too much color for what I'm painting. And then you can take a little bit of extra color out. That maybe is not appropriate. You know, I remember it was real common for folks to have to go take a smoke break. But I think it's good if you're at work, you could take a little art break instead and just be like, I need my brain to rest. It's okay. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if they let people have an art break well, at work? I think you could just get away with it. You could just take your little art set and be like, yeah, no, I got to go have a smoke break. And you just go off and just sit in front of some pretty outside area and have a little paint. I'm going all terrain blue, and that's her little gray mix there, and we're going to come under this particular branch. In the Keisha's case, you could just you know, watch the Art Sherpa for a little bit if you're having a little break. Yeah. It's okay. Well, I mean, and honestly, creative thinking is so helpful for problem solving in traditional jobs. I mean, yeah. you're just doing work study, enriching is, the environment, this improving. Is like, this is totally for work. This is... Your ability to problem solve and think outside the box. Your emotional resiliency for an ever-changing world. I tell you what, if you get in trouble. <laughs> you ever, yeah, you need, you need. Right? 
support at theartsherpa.com and I'll send a note. I would. Yeah. I would send oh. a note to your it boss. Should. Yes, I would. This is, if you get, yeah, for sure. I don't know that it'll help. But we'll send it. <laughs> I got a note from my art teacher. This is important for we're my ability like a to be. Thousand a... requests now for notes. <laughs> I do that. I'd take some time off and note for a while. That would be. That to me is its own art project. I'm making some like kind of little weird twiggly branches and shadow. And get wet again here and and say. Here's another little snowy branch coming down. Well, there's a question here. I need to go answer. Where did it go? Okay, I think this must be a acrylic question. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll see. Uh -oh. Let me go back over here. I'll read it to you. Uh, plug I in. I totally forgot to plug in today. I have multiple things to plug you in. Okay. But uh, I'll come plug it in while I say, Don was asking, my white seeps to keep uh, dunking up. I think that was a mistype. Uh, I think it keeps getting darkening up. Uh, like it doesn't spread smoothly and it's brand new and I've used the medium. Am I doing something wrong? Mm, if it's darkening. I'm not sure. It says it keeps dunking up. So, You're saying clumping up? Clumping, maybe clumping up? All right. So on that, uh, take a picture of what's happening. Um, write me out a description and tell me the brand and send it to support at theartsherpa.com. And I'll see if I can't help you like get into what's happening, if it's you or if diagnose it's them. Diagnose it. We'll diagnose it. We'll let you know. Is it you or is it them? <laughs> no, I already took care of it. Yeah, I said I would totally do that. And you were like, but I can do it. And I was like, no, I got it. Um, I, I wasn't plugged in. And I've got to, I'm going to have to give myself a little snowbank here pretty soon. It's going to be a layered snowbank. These trees are going to be layered together unintentionally. It should look pretty cool, but it wasn't on purpose. Just so you know, I wasn't cool like this on purpose. It just sort of happened that way. Look at that. It's looking good, though. Little trees growing up in the forest. Growing up in the forest. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to gotta just go for it, man. You got to Nike it up. I I don't, I'm not aware of Nike's current <laughs> position with the world. I got taken, I got, I didn't know about what Doritos had done. Like, like wait till, to way too late to like my support would have been just pointless anyways. I'm like mid ship going, oh no. Ah, it's hard to keep up. So again, coming to the ends, and hopefully you're kind of catching this. We're using this dark value of Payne's Great Ultramarine Blue to shade the ends of the tree, right? And create a sense of, oh, well, you know, that's in, those little ends are in value. We come right up here through the middle. We'll give that some value there too. See, so that's just creating a little bit of rainy snow. Now this is a weird angle. So the tree looks like it's leaning on the canvas, but it's not leaning. John's got to give us an overhead when he can, um, because that's just a, a really strange angle to try to view it. There you go. But you can see it sort of, we're going to add a little bit of snow down here also. Yeah, and that does not look nice. So we got another little tree. Hmm? Oh. Again, a little bit of Payne's gray and ultramarine blue. And you can even get a little uh, green into it if you want to, to kind of say, oh, it's in the forest. And let's, you know, kind of come up here and maybe 
had a bit of a tip. You never know where, you know, a little shadow is going to just make all the difference. Look at that little icy tree just start to become. And in this practice, it is good for you, not just in these trees, but you start to understand how your paint and your paper blooms and holds edge. You know, I can't tell you how different each paper block of paper is from each other. Um, I never try to put pressure on you to go out and buy a brand or anything in particular. Uh, people, the people from Sen LA do send me stuff, uh, well, Salvo Fair, send me stuff all the time. And I'm friends with the uh, owners of the company. Um, they, I wouldn't let them do it if I didn't like what they had. And I genuinely do like what they have. Um, there are other good papers out there, but there are also some papers that are a misery to use. So that's the other reason I always like to tell you what I've got going on, what I'm using, because it can be so hard to find a product that behaves how you want. Come under here and kind of paint the negative space. Sometimes you got to do that. You got to paint the negative space. That's the space around the object, in between the subjects. Right? There we go. I create an interesting little area under the branch. It's tremendous. Well, and the thing is, is like, I, I don't want you just to watch me paint a tree. And I know it's very relaxing to watch somebody just paint a lot of watercolor trees, especially different types of watercolor tree. I mean, who doesn't like to do this, right? Like, this is just chill. It's just, if you are having a really challenging week where you're, you're starting to like shake your fist at the sun and ask the universe, why you? Sometimes sitting down and just painting a bunch of little watercolor trees can be just the the perfect medicine for that experience. And we can see that as that shades out, that really starts to make a lot of sense. And you can bring some of these shaded out colors to the edge here saying, oh, perhaps some branches. I cannot help myself. It's too fun to paint the tree. And that when you do this, then if you have to do a snowscape and you have a bunch of focal trees, you have a better understanding of how am I going to make this focal tree? How am I going to, to, to bring forward the focus of the tree? You know. And again, we're painting trees for a minute, so just hang with me today. By the time we're all done, we'll be like, I got it, tree with snow. And that's why I wanted to have a bunch of different types of trees with snow. So you guys could get in there and be like, I really understand. So this is like sort of like, you know, that warm sort of evergreen day. And you're really still seeing some color in the landscape. Whereas this is that sort of desaturated uh, effect that you can get where things are almost in grayscale. Isn't that wonderful? You want to do the tall skinny tree now? And then we'll do the, we'll do the tall skinny tree. And, or we could do the bush. Want to do bush or tall skinny tree? Pick it. Uh, let's see. Whatever you can get to. I can do both of them. So I have the bushy. Which one do you prefer? I think uh, the bush might be in uh, tall skinny tree and then we'll fit the bush in somewhere. Maybe. Tall skinny tree. All right. So we've got this tall skinny tree. Look at that tall tree. Some sort of poply thing. Right. So now we're dealing with snow, leaves, trunk and ground and a little bit of height so that's rather lovely if you're really struggling with getting the shapes you can sketch these things out with say a pencil and sketch the whole tree out and then paint it in i like to paint this way because it helps me uh, detach from the object and start to see the shapes as they are and i feel lets me uh, 
do a better job of painting what it is rather than being so wrapped up in thinking about what it is, if that makes sense. So let's paint a tall, skinny tree. All right. And I fill the tall, skinny tree. Let's get a little bit of our quinacridone gold as our base of that tall, skinny tree, I think. All right. That fills a... Pretty probable, and I might get a little burnt umber into that. And I'm close to the gray and everything, so I'm going to be able to really um, handle it. Now, shall we go from the top to the bottom? Mm. Except I really want to know where to stop this one because it's so tall and skinny. So I'm going to come here and give myself another little snow bank with my snow color. Which, if you remember, is your burnt umber and your ultramarine kind of blue. And I don't know. Now it's now it's becoming a landscape on me while I'm not looking. I wasn't actually trying to do any kind of landscape. I was just, you know, sort of painting this. So let's... Come from the bottom. Begin painting a little trunk. Maybe get a little burnt umber in there. Some personality into that trunk. Go ahead and get a little burnt umber and uh, blue. And I'm going to just say, hey, let's take a, a little branch off here. So we can paint the trees both ways. Not really something that we can't come in and address. I think sometimes what happens is that we get to thinking about it. I'm going to get into my snow color and I'll maybe start a little bit of a snowing branch here and pop it out. And then I'll get some of my tree color and let it get in there. Come here and let's get some snow. You know how that's just going? We're just adding a little kind of there. And if you want to, you can always take some color off the branch. Go, oh, that's a snowy little branch. Now maybe up to this, I'm going to make a little... Uh, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, let's after the show. If, if we can. That would be my preference. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to bring a little branch in from my tree here. Come into my quinacron gold and let that tap out there. We got weird little moment. Got my green and quinacridone gold and gray up here. And so I can add that to it. Uh, Lady Jolina wants to know if they can see up close, please. 
Mm-hmm. That's, she's asking to zoom in, and I'm going to make a little more tree and do another little branch off, so it'd be a perfect little moment. Excellent. Okay. Making sure I'm keeping my snow color snowy. And let's uh, come over here. I'm going to tap my brush up and down, but I do want the paint to connect so that when I add the other colors, it bleeds through. Get a little bit of the trunk color going. Well, it's still wet. I'll get into maybe some of that fun green I had from earlier. Dark green. That's some little playful bits coming off there. Oh. They were asking about uh, the difference in palette. How come you're using, uh, you're not using the other big palette? Oh, because uh, John was having trouble capturing it on the camera. <laughs> it was too big. It was really bothering John. And it technically a huge, on a filming level. So what happened was it had a really thick lip, and it was a very large piece. So I had to zoom the camera out quite a bit to capture all of it, and. To just get the orientation close enough so that we didn't have to bring in an extra camera, it was too close to the main work for her arm to get to have a rest. So we opted to go for a thinner, smaller piece, which allows us to have more lateral space on the desk so that she can adjust and have a little more elbow room. Now, also, we recognize that this is a far more economical palette, and it works really, really well. So. You know, it's one of those things. Sometimes the... This is what we, we let the uh, people at the art retreat paint on because we make sure they paint on porcelain. Yeah. And, uh... you know, so they understand that the wedding out experience a little better. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put people on my retreat on plastic, you know. Let's get a little bit of our dark color. Maybe I'll get a little bit of that green dark color that we like so much. Hit some of the edges of that. Well, uh, Very fun looking pretty good and then we'll trunk it up. ISA water brush easy to use. Have you ever used a water brush? Yeah, I have. Um, so they have, uh, in travel, they're really terrific because you don't have to get a water cup with you, you know, and that can be problematic trying to get a water cup to work. Um, you have to be able to rinse out um, on watercolor for it to really, really work. And sometimes the water brushes can make it a little hard to do the rinse out. If that makes sense. Just tipping that up looking pretty good we're painting a weary little snowy tree how's your snow feeling guys you know but the top here i'm gonna actually come from the top down a little bit I'm going to break this up. Notice I'm breaking it up into kind of cloud-like shapes. It's very helpful to us.
I'm going to tap this out and let it bloom in, but then we have these hard edges there. And that's really helpful. That hard versus soft edge. That's a, a very interesting question. Hmm. Why is porcelain better than plastic? Uh, plastic beads up and porcelain, if you'll notice, when it wets out, it holds the shape of the wet out. So I mean so wet out as I go, I go like this and I wet that out. Um, it doesn't just turn into little beads. So the answer is, is that the hydroscopic nature of porcelain allows the pigment and the water to settle as a sheet instead of... Uh, Did you feel like I didn't answer that well enough? <laughs> no, I just was like, it's like, that's why though. It's that the, the, the there's a hydroscopic thing on the surface that causes uh, the water to sheet on one and to bead on the other. And it has to do with the, the surface of it. And that's why historically they've used more porcelain. I'm only excited because I only get to read this stuff. And <laughs> so it's like, I get to learn something that I could share. I just didn't know. It's a better answer. Yeah, I'm not trying I, to. Like, no, no, no. I don't. I don't feel mansplaining. It's a better answer. Explaining this. You're not partner explaining this. Partner. No, I just was like, I had a little thing that I read, and I was like, you're like, I, I know, know a thing. the science of this. Oh I was excited uh, to share, not try and. No, yeah, it's okay. I was science. You're allowed to know things. I don't. Uh, this was more know. of the the science nerd in the room was like no the hydroscopic surface tension of porcelain <laughs> is is less than it is on plastic so the the surface tension of the water is able to overcome the surface tension of the surface thus be able to afford beads on the plastic and not on the sur on, on the porcelain but if you don't understand the molecular surface nature of water versus porcelain then this is probably lost on you but i'm just saying there's a reason Did you use anything to promote blooming? No. That's the natural. Okay, so some paints will bloom more than others. I think we can look at it through these. That we did that. Um, some paints will bloom more than others. It's just their nature. And um, core is the most bloom. Um, you can add oxgall to your water to increase blooming. The si Okay, so I think there's also an effect. The sizing of the paper is conducive to blooming. So this particular brand... The sizing they use, they way, the way they make it really allows this to happen. So I like it. I found some papers like resisted, like a washcloth. <laughs> Let's just look at I've had some papers I've used where I felt like I was painting on a washcloth. Shall we paint Which some one? bushes? Okay. Show me bushes. So uh, you had a plan to put these in in layers, and I thought you were going to do like one per sheet. <laughs> and so like, I was like, I have no idea where you're going with this. Maybe we should rehearse this. <laughs> I mean, I can do one. I think I'm, you know, running out of room here pretty soon. But you, you know, can put the well. No, see, the problem is, is that that you, unless you, what do you call it? Uh, hold back the white. You can't put something on top of it now. No, it, that would be a way that um, uh, watercolor is very different than acrylic, and that it will not opaquely layer over background objects. Now, since there's mm -hmm. no cheating in art, could you multimedia it and yes. then squash? Yes. And then you go, I'm going to put yes. the white bush over the watercolor. Yeah, but it, but this isn't really a white bush. So, but no, let's look at what this I'm bush just, is. Where are you going? Uh, let's come here. Let's just finish out our row of. A little more ultramarine blue. Can you recommend a lower price practice paper? Strathmore watercolor block at Michael's half off coupon. They have 140 pound cold press paper. It's in a block and it's by Strathmore. Um, and then I use it a lot. Hmm. We're going to make little, little bush shapes here with our blue paint first. And I'll we'll see if I think that this was a good solution. And if I if I disagree with myself, I'll change my plan.
I'm gonna get a little of my burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue together for the twigs, I think. <laughs> hmm. Just some interesting chat. There's uh, some, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to, <laughs> so Mike said he bought Hobby Lobby paper yesterday and he feels like he's doomed. <laughs> I don't want you to feel doomed, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I, I, I understand. But you know subject. what, if it isn't, you know, come by group and share your experience. If you have a good or a bad experience with an art material, feel free to come by and share. You know, I'm going to do this differently. And nope. I'm going to finish this out, and then on the next sheet, I'm going to do this differently because I feel like it needs to be different. Yeah, that's a... Uh... I'm going to soften this out. I didn't like how those low branches looked. Soften it out and lift it up. Because I disagree with myself. <laughs> now that is what makes for a nice paper. Yes, right now, that moment. That exact moment, right? There <laughs> that's why the, I like my paper. It's the difference between cheap paper and good paper is that and that has a lot to do with how it's pressed, its size, the length of the fibers that are used. There's just so many things that go into it. You know, whether it's a partial cotton, pure cotton rag, like this. Um, this is pure cotton. Yeah. That, so and those long pure cotton cottons are nice because they have a very predictable wetting out and they stay wet deep long. Yeah, and they, they can migrate the, the water very predictably and... They dry very predictably, whereas some of the uh, blended materials may not act as you would predict when and it takes a time to be like, huh, that wouldn't, that didn't do what I thought when I used frisket. That's because it's not pure cotton. So, you know. I mean, fr uh, the, the Strathmore actually acts, beha behaves pretty well, yeah, even though it's not pure. Yeah, there's, there's different things, but they're, it's different just know that there's differences does it make that they're not equal or unequal just that be aware of them they're not the same <laughs> trying to paint this little bush in the snow yeah Let's get up from it and see if we like it. And then if I don't like it, I'll try it a different way next one. And I think I don't love it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I may try it differently next time. But it's not terrible. Oh, it's, it's not the worst. Um, I we just can... might do my branches a little bit first and then come back with my snow. I might just kind of change that operation. Uh, that way that the blend is a little more under control and um, doesn't... Uh, I think it's fair to say that this is a wintry shrubbery. <laughs> we have <laughs> we have shrubbed so much. We have winter shrubbed. <laughs> it's a little big in scale. In relationship to the tree, it's a fairly large bush, but <laughs> it's, it <laughs> you can get be a shrubbery. Point. You that, get my you know, point. Goes beyond bush. Could be a small tree. It's shrubbery. Shrubbery. I think we have uh, at least one more tree in us. Well, you went the the double tree. A kind of big tree. I'm going to make it a single tree, but it's... Oh, yeah, that I did one. not know. It was a... We'll go shh, see the double tree nature in it. Yeah, I think we can do a double tree. Actually, why not? I got to find my keyhole. There it is. So I'm going to remove this sheet from the pad. I think I left you with... Oh, you, you're using a palette knife. You're using a proper tool to use... 
I think for the most part, we'll just do this next one. All right, so there we go. I normally would leave it on the pad much longer to dry so it didn't get any curl. And so it didn't go. And I'll make sure I scan all these so you have them as references. And also, I will also get you some trees to use for practice. I'll pick you out some and on this video page, give you some trees to use for practice so you can practice some different trees. That way these skills aren't just sort of a one and done thing, but kind of the jumping off point for maybe more interesting ideas. So I've got Payne's Gray, and this whole next bit, Payne's Gray. And winter is like that. Winter can be so monochromatic mm -hmm. that um, you could do it with just a single color. I'm going to come to the top. I'm going to do top down again. It's been a minute since we've watercolored together. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, because I had to stop during the uh, basic course. Oh, yeah. Because I couldn't do both. But it's nice to have this little break. Yeah, it's good. The um, last watercolor of the year is tomorrow. And then um, I'll be back in January with you guys. And then... I'm going to be painting this weekend. I'm going to do two things this weekend. And um, I'll probably do something similar to this on Sunday with you guys just to give you some tree snow practice also with acrylic. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to be offline. Uh, um, except for maybe patrons might see some stuff. Uh, yeah, there's, what we're until say, January. We're not going to have anything scheduled until early January, mid-January. But there's that doesn't we're not locking ourselves out of like if the winds of inspiration blow, you know, because it's cinnamon and she might be like, oh, I found this secret thing that I can't announce right now, but I'm going to go do this random idea that I just had that would be so awesome. And then she gets up in the morning and I come down in the afternoon and there's 40 studies and she's like, I'm ready to record. Let's go. Happens. It does happen. <laughs> It's absolutely true. It does happen. And that's how we got the beginning acrylic painting course. <laughs> Woke up one morning and she's, there's studies everywhere. <laughs> she's like, I'm ready. Let's record. <laughs> I was like, and, uh, let's go. Yeah. I don't normally break during the holidays uh, from what I do, but this year I think I am. So make sure you don't miss the last shows of the year. Now, yeah. uh, either on the YouTube channel or over here. Just creating the thing. So we put in the light color and then we shade under the branches. Yeah. We shade under the branches. It was too dark. And when I see them too dark, I just rinse my little brush out. You know, I don't. Anne's like, where do we find the painter tutorial for the mushroom that Cinnamon just did? Okay, so that was not a tutorial. What that is is, uh, so if you guys don't know this, what I do with my patrons is on occasion, and I've just started this, I put an event up in group and I say, hey, I'm going to be live. And I don't teach. <laughs> It's chitty chatty. It yeah, it's I go design. I'm designing ideas. I'm going through concepts. Nothing that they see is even guaranteed to be a lesson. It's just me doing my work that I've got to do to create content for the channel. And they can come in and chat and see designs as they're happening. Um and what might be what might be coming up Ooh, on the channel. Yeah. And so that's that's actually what that is. But I, the the teaching of it, I've got a poll going on right now on Facebook. If you're over at the Facebook page, be sure you vote. Do you want the mushroom with fairies or without fairies? It looks like it's pretty much everyone's like, just do it with fairies because if we don't want the fairies, we can just not paint the fairies since they're last, which is a fairly accurate assessment. Um, and that would be Saturday at once. So that's the mushroom that you're talking about. So it will be a lesson, but it 
it wasn't guaranteed a lesson for the patrons. They just got to see it happen. It's happened. And, you know, sometimes they see stuff like Acrylic April and everything early. Um, where they get weird things that I'm working on. <laughs> they're, the t they're the guinea pigs. <laughs> they, they help us out uh, and test, help us test our concepts. <laughs> Oh, this is kind of interesting. Mm. Okay, uh, I had to read the question a couple times before I could understand it because it's just on the fly stuff. Okay, so Lady Jolina. Hi, asks, Lady Jolina. How are you doing? For those using pencils, and I'm guessing that's watercolor pencils, mm -hmm. uh, can you use a color out of a palette and keep reusing it like a pan, or once you wet it and it dries, is it done? Oh, on pencils, it's it, they're just like so. All this is. All this is here is what okay that's a credit that. color i don't want to use a credit color. um all this is try to use a, a, a color that is currently being uh okay so this is a watercolor pencil and all it is is watercolor in a pencil shape it is exactly watercolor pigment in there it'll bloom it even blooms yeah, it's every it's ex, it's just like what's in this tube, just like what's in your pans. It's just in pencil shape. Well, and it does have a slightly different uh, what do you binder thingy, but the pigment is effect. Yeah, it's just effectively the same. Yeah, it's just almost effectively the same. So for the purposes of you can use both. It's great for multimedia. Yeah. Really terrific for multimedia. And you can um, play with them interchangeably and reactivate them, and they are terrific. I really like the Karandash. Derwin's okay. Um, there's some others that are all right. Ooh, Kim would like to know, any hints about what Acrylic April is going to be this year? <sighs> um, yeah, there's going to be some hints in the patron group, but you guys did see a poll, so I'm thinking about the results of that poll right now. And it's not a guarantee. It was a was poll. Was it a poll about a poll or was it a poll with actual questions? <laughs> it was a poll with actual questions. And um, so it's not a guarantee. It was just a thought that I was having about what I thought I might want to do. That was pretty. Yeah, wasn't that fun? Come here with the Payne's Gray and just play. Tap in a little bit of weird branch shape. That weird branch shape. This double tree. Mm -hmm. It's a double tree. <laughs> Not a double talking tree. It's just a double tree. Mm -hmm. So there is an acrylic April. Um, I've got a poll going in the acrylic April group. And I am thinking about what's in the pool. I haven't fully downloaded and committed. Um, as we start uh, creating and filming Acrylic April, patrons are going to see it all early. Because um, they're, again, the guinea pigs. <laughs> that way, if I have to change my mind, because something in the, in the program isn't working, I have that freedom. <laughs> you know? yeah. And they can let me know, oh, this isn't working, or, oh, this is working really good, we need... A lot more of this. Filming for it's going to begin sometime in January. I like to do little drops sometimes coming out. I think it uh, is a nice little whimsical touch on the tree. I think we're probably going to record a couple pilot episodes for and see what we can get feedback on them. Yeah. Yeah, we usually with Acrylic April, it's actually quite a thing to do because uh, we'll have an idea and we think this is it. And then we'll do it and we're like, this isn't it. This is no way it. That is not the way to teach this. <laughs> it's wrong. And then we've got to go try anything. it again. And <laughs> we're like, let's rethink what we wanted to do here because whatever we were thinking wasn't wasn't the right thing to be thinking. Yeah. So oftentimes we simplify, simple, 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 simple. So we're just going to keep coming down. You'll notice I'm bending these branches down and I really just try to make irregular shapes. Yeah, I'm using the reference, right? And it does help guide me. But even from the reference to each time I paint it, there's differences. I get a little more of the paint's gray and 
can bring in little dark values of it here and there. Now, I'm going to say to any of the folks out there that if you have any questions about how to get access to or utilize your patronage. Oh, yeah, please. Support at theartsherpa.com, and our team will help direct you in the right place, help answer your questions. We will always guide you and be there for you and help you find anything. If you're a patron on YouTube, if you're a patron on the website, you write us email and you just let us know, and we will help you find what you're looking for yeah. right now like we were asked about notifications so people could know we were going to do the live thing and we're trying to figure that out because usually it's like hey i think i'm going to design a bunch of stuff do you want to let them know yeah and we'll just gonna... go live but maybe it'll become a plan thing the the thing is is that we're going to be restructuring our messaging our text messaging te technology and so uh really the challenge to this is that we want to be able to send uh more complex texts you know like with photos and maybe even videos to our patrons and uh then still be able to broadcast to everybody all month when we do the videos so it's a you know and to make that kind of substantial shift in our technology requires time and attention which at this particular time when we're producing two or more live shows two shows a week is like when we're like being lazy <laughs> Well, we're also producing two post-produced shows, at least, that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Launching product more than I would like care to mention. And laterally growing our company. In and a getting ready way. for an art retreat. So, oh, not, yeah. like, stuff retreat. is afoot. The All right, retreat. let's take an overhead look so we can talk about where we're at. All right, do you see how the trees kind of build up on each other and it's just, I almost think of it like a torn up umbrella. They're like rounded shapes and they're torn on the edges and they're feathered out and you want to just kind of weight them and you almost have to imagine that you feel the weight of the tree as it, as it, as it bows against the world. You know, it's kind of a nice thing. Kim would like to know, where do you find the pole? Uh, the pole... F Okay, for the fairies or mushroom is on the Art Sherpa public Facebook page. The poll for acrylic April about if my idea seems good to you. I think it is a good idea. I think we need to do it. Um, is in the acrylic April Facebook group. I was just going to say it's on top of the world. Now, this is still a little wet, so I can come back with a very dark color and kind of piece out this little shape here. Uh, pulling these branches maybe even a little more apart from each other. So while the paper's wet, you can even come back and, you know, detail out some work. Yes, Christy, you can make one-time donations on the website, and you are in the system, so don't worry about it. If you need, just email support at the Art Sherpa, and they'll help get you locked in. Yeah. Once you're in, you're in. <laughs> That's John's new philosophy. Come here and create kind of a little layering. A little bit of layering there. You can see just pulling these branches apart using value. So in the sense of like you were saying, is it a value study? It is. Oh, Christy, thank you so much. Um, our patrons across the board for acrylic or watercolor, is it separate? It's all one. It's all oh, one. Yeah. I forgot. That. I didn't see that. Yeah. We Bando, just, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, we have patrons that do watercolor. We have patrons that do acrylic. I... Um, so you might see studies for the watercolor channel early in the same way that patrons would see. Uh, the patrons saw the Santa happen. They saw the bird happen. Um, I think they saw me change my mind on one. Uh, so they'll see stuff like that. Um, and the sometimes they have classes that are specific for them. But I, you know how like some people are like, you get one class. We, they have all this like structured stuff. I just try to give my patrons everything I can every month. and. The idea is that everyone there is just helping me create art content for everybody free around the world. And then I just try to make my patrons feel special in every way I can. Which is doing stuff like, do you want to watch me in my studio design things? Yeah, it's, uh, it's 
you know, our primary goal is to produce free, easy, and approachable art content for the entire world. And uh, second to that is kind of everything else. So, you know, our patrons understand that our full attention is on giving those programs like the beginner, a beginner acrylic painting course for free. So if we're, if we're doing that, we can't always make them custom content. You know, and, so, and whenever a patron has been like, I don't like that, we've just refunded their money. Yeah, it's like, you know, this is, <laughs> we do understand we have a slightly different patronage, but at the same time, once you're in, you're in. We're never kicking you out of the patronage. Once you've supported us once, you're here forever. Um, and if you ever have to stop supporting that's, us. That's a new thing now. Yeah, so thing. if ever you've had to leave, you know, write us. Email. Or, yeah. We'll just put you back in. We just feel like with the uncertain future of the world. Yeah. You know, you know you're, you're supporting us. Um, if you have to stop supporting us, we don't feel like that should be a punitive thing. Because oftentimes people have to stop for things that are out of their control. So... If you, you know, and if you're still using our services and what we're doing, then you're pro likely to come back and patron us when, when you, you can. When you can. And that's fine. We're not like, it's, th that's why we try to make it very, you're in, you're in. We didn't, we didn't want to make it feel. Uh, and that's been an evolving thing as we go. Transactional. Yeah. Like transactional. Sometimes, you know, that stuff is sort of evolving as we go. Like we didn't know that's how we wanted to be. And then we've just kind yeah. of evolved into that. All right, I'm going to continue these downward branches. Emily loved watching the studio studies. Did you? It's fun. We're going to continue. See, I'm just using the light watercolor to sort of plan where I'm going. It's very light. And then I come back with my, you know, gray to shape the edge. And that helps create that little tree branch, wow. doesn't it? Jenna just, like, did a... Jen, Jen Butterfly, did a great job of just articulating... What it is. Our patronage works. She says, thank you for the never-ending patronage. <laughs> is what it is. Just <laughs> The eternal patronage. It is the eternal patronage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just had a really fabulous meeting with somebody in marketing and trying to explain what we do to, you know, oh my from gosh. that mindset of like, you're in it to make money. And that's, I got a meeting like in, I think 30, maybe 30, I gotta check it. Like in an hour from now, mm -hmm. I've got the meeting with that group. No, oh, really? Yeah, and they're like all aboard too. They're like, "Yep, we'll we'll adapt the system." So that's cool, and that'll just make it more accessible and awesome for everybody yeah. once we get past the initial purchase price. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So we super appreciate patrons. <laughs> so we. And well, once we once we have the lockdown data for you guys, we'll tell the patrons. We'll yeah. probably make a, a little yeah announcement. announcement. Oh, and we're gonna put some artwork up today. I think later by this evening for sale. I think is it this evening or you don't know? Oh, the the paintings, the studies. Uh, as soon as you get the rest of the scans done. Okay. So probably sometime after the show. I've, we've got uh, we've got a handful of meetings. Uh, let me let me just do this. So I lifted up a little bit of that color while it was still wet with my uh, paper towel. And we're coming and tapping the end with just the toe of this brush up and down in these irregular kind of shapes, trying to exaggerate where it's exaggeratable, the shape of the uh, branch. We come down. If ever you want to soften something, again, you just come back with water and see. It can soften it back in. So if you're like, oh, I don't love how that one little edge was looking, you just come back and fix it. That's all you got to do. Now here at the bottom, I'm going to kind of bring out a little bit of a base of the tree. This is maybe where the trees are hitting the snow. We're just getting a little gray. Again, it's value studies, right?
you know, and then you just put gray where it will help the tree. Hmm. You're just blooming those little. Yeah. But not everywhere. I touch it around. So some of it's in shadow and not all of it is. Because not all of it needs to be in shadow. Now, Nikisha. Mm hmm. Uh, Oh. Yeah, I think it's Nikisha. I'm going to answer any of her questions. She was like, she would love to paint with you in person. Now, we've got some big events coming up. We've got some big in-person events that are going to be uh, large group events where you can join in and it'll be very easy to come meet us. And then we've got some really cool... Like retreat. if you want to just be with me for five hours a day for many days. Actually, it's more than that because that's actual painting time where I make you work. Uh, no, I don't make it work, but we do paint and then, um, yeah, we every, eat together and we just art together all day and it's just all day, all day, all day. I will say that the consistent feedback, nobody felt like they under arted <laughs> on the retreats. They were like, Can we make a break? <laughs> that was my never one fear. I don't want them to make them feel like they didn't get enough art in. So let's give them all the art all day. I, and it was, it's like, it was, it was funny. like art boot camp. <laughs> it's like. Pick up that brush. Do no. those strokes. No. Well, we, no, it was fun. It was fun, but it was like, a, and we have video and photos to prove it. They were smiling. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but uh, answer your question. Yeah, we do events of all kinds, sizes, costs, and availability so that everyone can be part of the fun. So see, guys, this is how you just do those little snowy watercolor trees. It's not that bad, is it? No, that was good. Um, and, and my thing is, if you're really struggling with the shapes, get the pencil out, draw the shapes, see the shapes, right? Because what you're trying to see is the way this little amoeba meets this little amoeba meets this little amoeba meets this little amoeba and watching it all build up as it goes. Christy's like, I would love to art eat with you. Yes, I approach like I, I'm, I am doing healthy life choices right now, but I approach food like I'm a hobbit, so... We have the it's yummies. It's good to eat with me. <laughs> we do have the yummies. We do provide the yummies. So things to notice, like, you can kind of see how the watercolor gives you that, gives you the snow, right? Things you can do is you can come in and deepen the values, places if you feel like it needs to have deeper shadows. Um, I think that's always important in watercolors to remember that, you know, uh, you want to you wanna keep shadows... Uh, a going. I don't know why I'm going to sign it. These are studies. You don't generally sign studies, but I'll sign it. Because that study may find a home. Because that study might find a home. <laughs> so many of these. Everyone's you want to buy a bunch of awkward trees? And, and it's ways <laughs> to support the channel. It's so it's like, and folks like that. Because it's like we can offer this stuff sometimes. So As listen, we... let me know if you like these core classes where we practice on a single topic and we spend a little time focused on it and we just learn how to relate to it especially in a new media like watercolor I, and if you like this i might do this in acrylic uh so you can see how to do the different snowy acrylics um my brushes are there no brushes. okay it's fine i'll, I'll fix no it no brushes <laughs> so many. if you guys had any idea how many brushes were over here you'd be like she's got a problem so I'm like surrounded. Yeah, it's, I'm like, it's like a, it's like an army. Of Let's see if I can pull her out to see me. all the brushes. Hold on. I don't think you can because they're they're fully curved around me. Yeah, if I pull out on that lens though, yeah, I can I can actually get a lot of them because it okay. starts showing. Like everything. they're in a complete arc around me. Yeah, she she has a I she has a spaceship of art supplies. I do. I have Star Wars and I have a spaceship Console. of art supplies. So. This is what you want to do. If there's something I could have done to make this easier for you and help you learn it, let me know. Give me feedback. Uh, all, I appreciate polite feedback. Um, it, it lets me know how you're doing. I can't always address every bit of feedback, but I appreciate polite feedback. Uh, you suck is feedback. It's not really that actionable. <laughs> so it doesn't help me do better. Or, or feedback like, it would have been great, but your hair was purple. Uh, my hair is probably going to be purple. So, like, specifically about how I'm sharing information with you, feedback. Mm hmm Yeah. Because hair color changes. All the time. And, I, and I, I don't ascribe to the idea that at a certain time of your life, you have to have a certain hair color. I feel like you should have your hair color, and I'm going to have my hair color, and it's on my head, and it doesn't hurt you. So, that is my feeling on that. 
Um, so that's probably not going to change <laughs> unless I feel like it. And then I will do it for me. Um, so that's kind of where we're on that. So give me feedback on that. I think we'll do this. Uh, so uh, we've got tomorrow, Santa. And then uh, Saturday, we'll do some version of the mushroom. Whatever wins the poll, I think it's going to be fairies. We'll do the mushroom. And then Sunday, we'll do maybe some snowy tree practice. And then we're going to break for the holidays from each other for a little bit and come back in January. Check the website store. I'll be posting stuff. Check the event. Remember, you can enter to win a, a ch enter for a chance to win a ticket to the event it doesn't include airfare you gotta be able to get yourself there but it's like the full ticket so like we're feeding you and housing you and doing everything um so one lucky person will have a chance to win that um and then uh whether you're on my mom's community everybody can can enter um anything else Y'all are awesome. You guys are awesome. And we're coming to the end of 2021. Um, some, some, some of you guys have noticed I'm a little like uh, maybe, I don't want to say low key. I would say what it is is that I'm on, my doctor put me on a reduced calorie diet. I think I'm just not sugared up like well, I usually I, I would also say, you guys, there's a tremendous amount of work work that's happening behind yeah. the scenes right now. And to say, I mean, I just can't understate how much stuff Cinnamon is doing I every day. I feel like day we're beavers up. and yeah. we just move the dam every day. It's so very strange. So <laughs> I'm okay, though. Yeah, we love doing this. I'm okay. We Everything is okay. Art, I, I'm not unhappy or sad. Everything is good. I take really good care of my mental health, like promise. Uh, I realized being online, I had to have mental health care help, and I have that. Um, some good mental health. and I, seeing a doctor and I'm doing physical therapy and I'm eating the healthy foods and tracking it with my watch. I'm all over this. Mm -hmm. So I'm good. Um, and the kids are great and everybody's great. My mom's great. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know if mom's telling you. Everybody. I'll well, have tell to, them. I you don't know. I can, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Don't tell them. I'm gonna okay. I don't know. So she doesn't know anything. I don't know anything. So, um, check it on my mom. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to help her. <laughs> Check it out, my mom. Because here's what happens: is sometimes we will accidentally say something and let a herd of cats out of a bag. But in all fairness, no one can ever say anything to me again because my mom got married and forgot to tell me, and I found out about it from social media. Not married. She didn't get married. She got engaged. Engaged. Right? Like she sent me an email saying, Do you like this ring? It's so pretty. I just got it for myself. No other information. I got no it. No other information. <laughs> and I was like, and, and she's like, Don't worry. We didn't get married. And I'm like, One, I wouldn't be worried if you got married. You're grown and you like this person. So that would be fine. But huh. two, I was like, Oh, okay. You know, buy you jewelry. That's good. And then all of a sudden, boom, the congratulations are coming from everywhere. And I'm like, What is going on? What happened? And then I go watch the video. And that's when he asked me to marry him. And I'm like, Oh, uh, mom, in the future, you, you have missed. to tell me you missed some points mom <laughs> some information so i feel like i can kind of do anything now i'm on a pass as a pass i have a pass i don't know it's your I have mom. a pass it's my well yes it is my mom but i have a pass on like sticking my foot in my mouth in social media because i didn't get engaged and not tell anybody it is okay by the way i very much approve of the engagement she could have gotten married i like the guy he's a good guy he treats yeah. her really well and so it makes they, me super they're happy. happy they're very happy and super well suited and i feel like my mom deserves somebody good yeah. in their life i agree yeah so may we all be blessed with love in our lives love 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 from somewhere whatever love should come to you i wish it to you be good to yourselves be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.